Hello and welcome to the Endurata studio. I'm Rob Martin and I'm joined here by Richard McKindo, Executive Chairman of Edge Electrons. Richard, welcome. Hi Rob, good to be here. So you've worked for Energy Australia for some time in, in your previous life. Um, and Australia, I believe, has got one of the world's highest uptakes of solar PV. Yeah. But it hasn't been without its challenges. Yeah. What's, what's the story over there? Yeah, so it's been very interesting over the, over the last few years to see the uptake of solar in, in, in Australia, which is probably higher than anywhere else in the world. You know, we have some 30% um, plus average penetration rate in states such as Queensland and South Australia, and some regions where that penetration adoption has gone up close to 50%. So it's causing some real issues on the, on the grid, the low voltage grid, which was designed to take energy from one point to the consumer, is now seeing flows backwards and forwards has issues around voltages which are being pushed higher and higher uh, by the uh, large-scale adoption of solar uh, and other uh, power quality issues around frequency and harmonics. So the, the network is having real challenges being able to accommodate that very rapid and high penetration of solar. And we were talking off camera and I mentioned that I was living in Australia um, before as well and yeah. At the time that I was living there, there was a pretty crazy government incentive <laughs> scheme that yeah. didn't necessarily backfire, but the uptake was way higher than they yeah. had anticipated. Um, is, is that the case? Yeah, I mean, it, it, we have in Australia um, a, a real uh, tension between federal politics, Canberra level, and then state politics. And at a state level, you saw different states adopting different feed-in tariffs, some of them 44 cents up to 60 cents and above feed-in tariffs and the adoption rate was phenomenal. So we now have around 1.7 million households uh, out of just over 8 million households that have solar. And that's as one of the highest penetrations anywhere in the world. And a lot of those households have got small old solar systems that were really put in just on the back of some extremely rich feed-in towers. Yeah, okay. So you mentioned about the challenges um, on the grid side. And are you seeing those manifested in Europe as well? Yeah, it's interesting because that, that rapid penetration of solar into the Australian market, hasn't, we haven't seen such a rapid penetration in countries in Europe other than possibly Germany. We've definitely seen it in, uh, in US states like Hawaii and California. But here in, here in Europe, we do see countries, Germany, Italy, the UK, which are starting to experience the kind of network uh, issues and challenges around power quality caused by penetration of renewables, whether it's solar or, 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 um, or larger scale wind. And how are you seeing customers, um, politicians, and the grids themselves responding to the yeah. challenges? Well, I think first of all, from a customer perspective, one of the, uh, one of the challenges, if, you, if you're uh, with solar and you're, you're living in an area of concentrated solar, you find that the voltages in that area have been pushed up really high. And that means that you're actually being forced to consume electricity at a higher voltage than your appliances require. It can damage your appliances. It fundamentally means you're paying more for your electricity than you, than you need to because higher voltage means you're drawing higher kilowatt hours. So yeah, all the customers are suffering in a way from high voltages caused by high penetration of solar. The challenge here from a customer point of view is actually as tariffs go up, and tariffs have increased dramatically in Australia. And people adopt solar, people of, uh, who own their own house can put solar on their rooftop. You're finding as those people go off grid, the tariffs are rising even faster for those people who are without solar, renting their houses and so on. So it's a real challenge for customers there who are in this kind of, this death spiral is causing tariffs to go up and up and up and they can't get out of it. If you don't own your house, you've got nothing, nowhere to go. And of course the rental market in, in London is incredibly strong, very difficult for, for the younger generation to buy, yeah. who might be people who are, would be more inclined to, to generate their own power. Yeah, I mean that's exactly right. I mean, we've, uh, if you look at the number of people who own, number of uh, people under the age of 35 who own their own home, it has dropped over the last 20 years by 21 to 25 percent. Even under the age of 45, you're looking at about a 15 to 17 percent reduction yeah. in home ownership. These people will never put solar on their roof. Yeah, yeah. The landlord isn't interested in doing it, so they end up suffering from these higher tariffs. Whilst people who are able to afford solar 
and generate their own electricity are, are seeing a reduction in their electricity costs. And I, I understand the, that, that kind of winners and losers element of the property market there in terms of being able to play. Yeah. And there's also, I guess, a, an element of Culturally, in Australia and the UK, buying a house is a, is a big part of, of life and, and, and maturing. It's not the case in Germany, is it, where home, owner, home ownership isn't a, that much of a big deal. People yeah. think that we're crazy that we want to own homes. Yeah. They, they rent for their whole lives. So not everyone is even culturally in that, that space. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that, that's right. And it, going back to um, the haves and have-nots here, as you look at uh, different jurisdictions, it's interesting to see how different, penetra different penetration levels of, of solar and how the, the networks are responding to, to this. And across the board, as more people adopt solar and use less energy, um, the revenue base for the networks drops. So as a result, they're starting to charge higher network costs to those customers who, who are left on grid without solar. What we're seeing in Australia and we're seeing increasingly here in Europe, therefore, is a change in the tariff structures that, that, that the networks are charging. Rather than charging just for kilowatt hour consumption, they're moving to a capacity and energy based tariff. So businesses and even consumers, residential consumers in some places, are being charged in what's called KVA, kilovolt amperes, which is a measure of the capacity and the amount of the network that you use, as well as in kilowatt hours, which is the energy you consume. And I think this change in tariff structure is something that we'll, we see in Europe a lot more over the next few years. So make me feel better about this, the, what's, the, what's the tech solution? Well there are different uh, technology solutions uh, to this. Um, what kind of disappoints me is that governments have tended towards focusing on the very big new projects and there's nothing wrong with large solar and large renewables there. Um, but you tend to find politicians gravitate to something that has, you know, they can wear a hard hat on TV and cut a ribbon. One of the cheapest or the cheapest and uh, solution available to everyone is an energy efficient program, an energy efficiency program. Energy efficiency has tended to have this rather dour recession era image about it. But actually the opportunity for all customers to reduce their consumption is there and it's not just by behavioral change of switching the lights off and so on there are technologies such as voltage regulation technology that automatically does this for you no behavioral change for the customers but by dropping the voltage at a household level you can reduce customers consumption by up to 10 percent and more and customers want two things they don't want to change their behavior and they want to be able to see how much money how much energy they're saving and technology is available to do this. It's not as glamorous as the big glossy uh, or the big shiny new power stations, but critically it's available for all customers, including those people who don't own their own home and can't, can't afford their own solar. And this is where Edge Electrons are playing, I assume? Yeah, that's exactly what we're, we're focusing on. We're focusing on um, energy efficiency, energy saving devices that can cover all consumers. So uh, in particular, we'll look, for example, at social housing and government uh, owned housing, where you're looking at a lower socioeconomic group who can't put that solar on their rooftops. But by, by managing down the voltage and regulating the flow of electricity so that they, they, they're not being force fed higher voltage and more kilowatt hours than they require, we can reduce their electricity bills. In addition, by monitoring their consumption, we can then offer advice on energy efficiency and, and what you find actually is that the lower socioeconomic uh, sector of society will tend to consume more than everyone else because they'll spend, yeah, they'll, 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 they'll buy the cheapest equipment which is actually the most inefficient from a consumption right. perspective. So there's a real opportunity there to help those people who are suffering most from the higher tariffs. That's good to hear. And on that note, we'll, we'll finish today. Richard McKindo, thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much, Rob. And thank you for joining us in the Engerati studio. Remember, there are more uh, videos and interviews available on the Engerati YouTube channel. Thank you.